Welcome everyone. This is a uh, pre-recorded uh, Q&A session for the screening of Ikanu by uh, Aribam Sham Sharma. This is a screening as part of the landmark section of the Singapore International Film Festival. This is a brand new section uh, co-presented by SDIFF as well as Asian Film Archive that highlights response cinema classics from uh, around the world. Uh, my name is Vignesh Kobinanen. I'm a film programmer with the Asian Film Archive and I also programmed this year's landmark section. Uh, we are, we are here with us are, are two uh, distinguished guests who will be joining me in a uh, Q&A session. The first is, of course, uh, none other than the director of Itano himself, uh, Aribam Sham Sharma. He's one of the luminaries of Indian cinema, a leading figure of filmmaking in Manipur in northeastern India, uh, with a prolific career of more than 40 fiction and non-fiction features. He's also a singer, music composer, and has been lauded with um, several uh, domestic and international awards. Uh, we also have with us uh, Shivendra Singh Dangapur. He's a filmmaker, archivist, and uh, restorer, and uh, founding director of the Film Heritage Foundation. Uh, this is a non-profit organization based in Mumbai. Uh, it is also dedicated to the supporting the conservation, uh, preservation, and the restoration of the moving image. Um, along with many of the projects that Shivendra has led uh, is Ishanu. So we'll be talking to him a bit about um, how that process came about as well through our conversation today. Um, so our first, the, my first question is to uh, Aribamji. Uh, as uh, we've talked about just now, the film made its uh, world premiere at the 1991 Singapore International Film Festival uh, in the Asian Feature Film Competition and in an in a exceptional um, uh, manner, it was screened before uh, it screened at Cannes. Uh, and now it's uh, it's kind of like the film is coming back uh, to where it, where it first premiered um, thirty year, more than thirty years later. Um, and I'm wondering, Aribamji, if you could uh, talk a bit about how that feels for you to have your film uh, your you know, restored after thirty years and and come back to the oh. festival that first premiered it. Yeah, I must. Uh, I am very happy, Raga, because this my film is shown again in Singapore International Film Festival. That was screened in 1991. And I came there. And I participated at the time in the festival. But this time, it is not possible for me. <laughs> A bit old. and uh, uh, But I am very happy. Because uh, for the second time, it is being screened here in, uh, in Singapore. And uh, uh, it is very rare. I mean, opportunity for me to be screening in your landmark section. And thank you for that, for the for, uh, for the selection of this film for screening there. Yes. Great. Um, and uh, over to you, Shivendra. I'm wondering, could you talk a bit about your journey with the film, uh, Itanu? Uh, how did you first encounter it? Um, and your, your, how did you get to know, uh, Aribamji and how did this whole restoration project for the film come about? Yeah, uh, you know, Viknesh, thank you. And, uh, you know, I'm very grateful uh, to Aribamji, uh, and I'm honored that I'm sharing, uh, to speak with him. Um, also, I think it's important to understand that like 1991, it's happened exactly the same in, in 2023. It was screened in Cannes and it is screened back in Singapore. So this is all destiny. It, it has to, it had to happen. I think these two festivals love Ishanu and, and they both invited the, this film, uh, because of the sheer magic of this film. Um, I got to know Aribamji's work thanks to my mentor when I was studying at FDI. PK Nair was, uh, the founder of the National Film Archive. He is uh, uh, almost like a god figure for many of us, and I, I would I would uh, almost say that he's singularly responsible to a large degree for what the Indian New Wave came about. Because had it not been for him to showcase these cinemas, to build the archive, and to constantly encourage the new wave filmmakers, they would have come. So I was exposed to Ishanu way back, but I hadn't seen it for years, and. Uh, it was, uh, you know, just after COVID in, in 2020, uh, 21, I mean, when we went to Manipur uh, to uh, build 
help Manipur State Film Development Corporation to build their own archive. And uh, when Arimamji brought a 35mm print of Ishanu, and uh, I met Arimamji there and he showed that film. And uh, for me, it was a very emotional journey because it was Peek and I are connected and it was Arimamji's film. I loved the film. And I came back and I said, why is this film not restored? Because there were scratches, there were, you know, it, 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 I was watching an old print and um, I was very worried. And then we had a meeting with Dhruva and, uh, you know, it's just been an amazing journey with uh, with Dhruva being so involved in his grandfather's work, uh, almost so much that uh, we worked right from the inception till the film was conceived. Arimamji was involved in, in the grading and things. Um, so when we restore a film, we are so meticulous in the way we restore that it's almost that you start living like a filmmaker. And, and that's the journey. And we want to be very particular about keeping the vision of the filmmaker intact. And uh, whether it's in terms of grading, in terms of sound, in terms of the picture quality. And uh, it it was one of the most beautiful journeys for me to bring this film back and look at the reception. It's it's almost traveling all over the world. People are rediscovering this film. Um, and because it's from Manipur and the northeast of India, people have started feeling that the rich heritage and the rich culture of India has been finally shown because it's through, through the regional cinema what makes up India. It is not through, through the cinema of Bombay. Cinema of Bombay is so one-dimensional. I don't even know where they exist, those people who, who are in those films. But if you really look at India, it is through this regional films. And Ishanu is one example of almost a classic and one of the most beautiful interpretation of the people of Manipur and its culture and its and it's the way Aribamji has brought it uh, onto the screen. And we just helped it to restore it in the way he would have imagined. Yes. Thank you. Um, my next question is uh, back to Aribamji. Um, I'm wondering if you could say a bit about the development of the film, how it, it first started to come about. I, I read that it began with a screenplay that uh, MK Binozini Devi uh, wrote, uh, and you've worked with uh, um, uh, uh, Binozini Ji for uh, quite a few times, and you even made two short documentaries about her. Um, could you maybe talk a bit about that collaboration with uh, Binozini Ji? and how that uh, developed into the film that became Ishanu. Yeah. Uh, before answer, answering that, I, 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 I mean, about regional film, just when uh, uh, also talked about that. And uh, Nayarsa was very much interested in regional films because Indian film, we, we forget that India consists of states, that means regions. There is no Indian film as such. Indian film means the regional films. Regional films together, it means Indian film. And uh, sometimes, you know, it is forgotten. So I say that it uh, Manipuri film or SME film, Bang Bengali film, all these films together, Indian film. So. Uh, 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 this, this this is very important po point, and so development must be of these different uh, having their identity, their culture. If you say Indian culture, culture means different. I mean, culture of these different regions, and so Indian film means the film produced in this region in different languages, and so Manipur. And it has got some, uh, you know, Manipur is the eastern most part, and uh, 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 and uh, uh, the people are Mongoloid in structure, and they have got their own expression, their own language, and the Maitis, they, uh, they have got their own script also. And really, it is a long history and uh, about the development of the Manipuri culture. About this particular story, I and the Maharaj Kumari Binodini, you know, and she is she is very much interested in my views. And uh, she knows so many stories about his my views. And so we thought 
uh, uh, I mean, we wanted to make a film on the on the Maybes and so collecting different stories and taking out or make a, a sort of uh, I mean making a story or rather screenplay out of these stories, and uh, we ventured to this. Uh, to this film, uh, to, the, to this film Ishano. And uh, uh, at the time I was uh, this uh, managing director of Manipur Film Development Corporation. And so this at this time also the Ishano was restored with Manipur Film, uh, Manipur State Film Development Corporation and uh, Shivendraji. And uh, Shivendraji has taken all, I mean, all possible um, he's everything what is possible to make this film a good restored film. So I am I also thank him very much at the same time, Manipur Film, Manipur State Film Development Corporate, uh, uh, Society also. And so the story, actually, it is the actual, I mean, real life story. It is not something that's just uh, made up. Uh, Created by us. No, it is it is a real story, and uh, uh, fortunately, I got very good artists, Manipuri artists, to perform the different directors, and so it has come in in this way. Thank you, thank you, Arbanji. Um, back to you, Shivendra. I'm wondering. Uh, you know, you spoke, and both you and Arbanji spoke a lot about um this idea of understanding Indian cinema is really about understanding the regional cinema and, um, you know, yourself and, you know, uh, and, uh, and restorers like you are, are, are working to uncover different pockets of cinema that, that, you know, many of us might not have uh, known. So now we have a, a more deep understanding of, of how complex uh, cinema culture is. Um, I'm wondering where, where does this work uh, continue from here uh, after say a film like Ishanu, um, are there other uh, plans in the pipeline for other sort of uh, regional cinema of India, Northeastern uh, cinema? And is there anything that you could share with us at this point? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, India makes films in 55 languages. 55. Uh, that's the statistics we have from the last censor censor censorship, which you can well imagine the diversity within India, the absolute regional diversity and the film industry being in, in almost every part of heritage, and which also explains the, the deep difficulty of uh, preservation when a foundation like this has to preserve work or restore, which, which is almost dealing with 55 languages all across uh, the region. Uh, the Film Merit Foundation is absolutely committed towards finding these cultural gems, um, classics. And, and I again and again want to pay tribute to my guru, P.K. Nair, because he single-handedly made us realize the diversity and the unity among the regional forces when, when he collected films from all these regions single-handedly. And he was able to showcase those films to us. Otherwise, we would have not known what India is because had we not at the Film Institute seen these wonderful films uh, of various regions. And we are now working on a restoration of an Uriya film, uh, Nirad Mahapatra. Uh, it, it's called Maya Mriga, which is also a very important film for Morissa. Highly neglected. We found it in a go-down and uh, we should be ready by the beginning of next year. We are also restoring a film called Manthan, which is Sham Benegal's film, uh, which is produced by 500,000 farmers, uh, which almost brought the milk revolution um, into, into foray. I mean, it's produced by the farmers. So we, we are restoring that. Um, and then Ghatashadda uh, of Girish Kasarwani, uh, which is also one of the most important films to emerge from India. So if you look at it, uh, we have a Uriya film, we have a Kannada film, we have a Hindi film, uh, which is Manthan, which again is, is got a Gujarati dialect to it. So, and we would, of course, 
we are talking to Dhruva and in some way or the other to restore Imagi at some point. And uh, so the search to find regional cinema and the search to, to continue to restore is the mandate of the foundation. And and the lesser the the, the films are, but also we are, we are partnering with another interesting film uh, with the Arsenal Archive is Badnam Basti. It's India's first uh, gay film, which is being, you know, which was made, which was released only one print and then taken off. And uh, that's also getting restored. So very exciting period the foundation is going through. And we are trying to do uh, as much as possible because we know that if we don't do it, there is nobody else doing these kind of films. Of course, Hindi cinema will always have, uh, they will keep restoring Guru Dutt and Vipal Roy and Raj Kapoor and all that will keep going on. But to me, like I, I said, the whole joy is to, to relate to something which is within our, within our regional culture. And that is what to me is India. Thank you, Shivendra. Um, uh, Aribamzi, I would like to ask a bit about uh, your early career uh, when you first started making films. Um, in a way, your beginnings in cinema, it also kind of coincides with the beginnings of um, filmmaking in Manipur as well. Uh, you know, I, I, you're in 1972 when you acted and also did music for Matamgi Manipur, uh, famously known to be the first feature film coming that came out of Manipur. Um, and, you know, with Imagi, which is now being restored. I'm wondering for many of us who are not familiar with that history of uh, Manipuri cinema, what was that like in the early days, uh, in the 70s, uh, being involved in cinema and making films in Manipur? <laughs> Manipur, you know, at the time, the population few lakhs. And having, uh, I mean, having cinema houses, two or three cinema houses, and and trying to produce a film in celluloid, imagine the expenditure. At the same time, we all wanted to make a film, and so uh, 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 in the fifties, uh, a group of people tried or uh, a theater. Uh, Mahal Theatre and uh, a, a, a very uh, a popular uh, drama, Mayu Pemcha, they tried, you know, but they could not do that because it was so expensive and uh, they couldn't complete the film. Then after that, only in 1971, somehow uh, one producer, uh, Karam Manmohan Singh, and he he wanted, or just, and he is not actually, uh, uh, he was a businessman actually, but somehow he wanted to make a film. And so we all helped him. And I was there in the first, from the first film, uh, Manipur, Matambu Manipur, as music director, and at the same time, actor. But it is a long story about how uh, this thing, uh, how this came out, I mean, the Manipur, uh, first Manipur film, and it has got a story, very interesting story, but it is a long story, so I won't, I mean, to be sh uh, in short, and it came out in 1972, and I happened to be one in that, and I learned about filmmaking also, in the making of this Matangu uh, Manipur. Then, uh, then uh, every year, we uh, in Manipur produce one film or sometimes two films in that way because in celluloid it was very expensive. But the history, if you look at the cultural history or uh, music, drama, uh, theater, and dance, Manipur, you know, they are Manipur is very rich in theater. You must uh, you know about Ratan Tiam, Kanayala. And all are there in the Manipuri dances, classical Manipur dances, you know. Though it is very small state, it has contributed much in the culture, in the in the Indian culture. And uh, they have got a very long history of this development of culture in many fields of culture. And so we wanted to make, we want rather, we wanted to express ourselves. We want we try to express in music in dance, in form of dance, in theater, in literature. But 
at the same time, we wanted to, to express ourselves through film also. And so, uh, 1971, from 72 onwards, and uh, we produced one or two films each, each every year. And, but in, in 1981, I made this imagining theme. Imagining theme, my son, my thesis, it won the Grand Prix at Nantes. Uh, and the first one in, from India, and then after that, it was screened in different places I mean, throughout the world. Uh, then after that, after 10 years, I met this Ishano. During that time, so many other films came out, but uh, 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 commercially successful in some way. But after that, uh, this uh, digital or video, it is easier for us, it is less expensive. So now, many producers, many films are produced every year. And as, uh, the history is like this. Thank you, Ari Um And I also wanted to ask a bit about your career as a documentary filmmaker and, um, and how these, you know, in a way, these two practices uh, inform each other. Because one thing that's quite striking about Ishanu is uh, how um, how many of the scenes are shot in such a natural way, in almost like an observational manner. Um, and maybe you could talk a bit, a bit about the style in which you approach Ishanu and how your documentary work informs your narrative filmmaking work. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm rather fortunate uh, in a way that I could uh, lay hands on documentaries at the same time on piece of film also. And also I produce, you know, I, I will inform you, a very highly successful commercial film called Olang Thagi Wamadisu. And so far, there is no any other film, even Hindi or English, who can defeat this film. I mean, it rained for 32 weeks in Manipur, in a single house, and it defeated uh, surely. So it rained for 28 uh, uh, weeks in other house. It was reported in film PL very well. And uh, and so I happened to make that also because I am a musician, music, uh, using songs in the same way, uh, just uh, Indian film and Hindi films are doing in that way. I made the film, Olang Taiwan, the show, and uh, it was the longest running film so far in, in, in Manipur. And uh, at the same time, I wanted to make this documentary film, especially on cultural uh, uh, subjects, on, on the culture, just, just like Lai Harawa. I met on Lai Harawa, uh, uh, the dances of Lai Harawa. It was the opening film of uh, uh, Ifi in Delhi, I think 90, uh, 96, 96, yes, it was the opening film. This documentary was the opening film without any commentary the dances of Lai Harawa. In that way, I met many other films on, on wildlife and on flowers and on dances. In that way, uh, because I wanted to know more about our culture and it, it gave me a chance to make more films. And then I had the opportunity of associating with uh, Sangeet Nartek Academy and the Indira Gandhi National Center. The uh, Kapilaji, you know, Kapilaji always she she loves my work, and she always helped me to make more documentary films. And so I made on 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 martial art of Manipur. In this way, you know, I uh, I made many documentary films at the same time. Uh, documentation, very long hours documentation of Laiharawa. After that, I met this Ishano. Means after having all the ideas uh, of like, how, uh, and how it is performed and everything, then after that, I met this Ishano. And uh, here, I many footage uh, I took from documentary films in this film Ishano. Uh, documentary, documentary. Uh, many people say very interesting. They say it is a documentary film. And I say it is okay if you want to say that it is let it be documentary film. At the same time, it is feature film. The artist 
and uh, the way how it is made, it is mainly a, a, a feature film, story based film. But I I I use that the type of uh, uh, documentary film making type, or rather the, the, that. Uh, that part uh, and so so it is a combination of both feature and documentary you may say it, in, in that way and uh, i had this opportunity of making uh, making films on dance and the one on uh, on ballet the, the dancing deer of manipur and the ballet very famous ballet film and it was appreciated in uh, this uh, 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 and then uh, British Film Institute is an outstanding film of the year. I have got this article. They have given me a, a very interesting uh, or rather uh, certificate is one of the best, I mean, the best of film of the year in 1990, uh, 19, 19, uh, 89, I think, 89, yes, it, it, it is. So I had this opportunity of making both feature and non feature and also commercial film also. Thank you. Um, uh, Sivendra, I'm, I'm wondering if I could I could ask a bit about a bit, something a bit, perhaps a bit more technical regarding the restoration process. Um, you mentioned in your notes that you wrote for Il Cinema Retrovato that the print that you had seen of Ishano had uh, rather uneven colors and perhaps not optimal uh, at, at, the, at, at the point of watching it. Uh, I think part of the joy of, of this film in particular is the colors themselves, you know, uh, shot with such warmth, um, and, and realism. Even, even though, you know, we've, we move between fantasy and reality, there's, uh, this sense that they exist within the same plane, that we are not uh, going to a different place to enter a, a state of spirituality, is that spirituality, um, is, is very much embedded within this world. And I think that it's brought about quite beautifully through the colors. Um, I'm wondering what were some of the challenges of approaching uh, the, the restoration of the color and how uh, did you go about doing that? I, I think one of the big challenges with the new wave cinema or the regional cinema is the budget itself because they were made in, uh, it's it's unheard today, the way they made those films. They were almost shot in a very limited ratios. Uh, they also shot in different light conditions because it was never governed by the choice they had uh, many times they had to shoot because of of various reasons uh, in ishano particularly uh, we we had the use of intertitle i mean inter negatives which uh, it's it's a 16 mm uh, you know material you you're dealing with so there is there is already that challenge of of a 16 mm which is blown up to 35 and uh, then the use of uh, inter negative makes it uneven at parts uh, lighting conditions because they've been shot in a natural environment and the sheer material itself you know when you look at the celluloid because it's acetate based so the acetate unlike a polyester which came later the acetate has its own challenges uh, even though the quality and the sound because of the silver content in it is is very good but the number of scratches the number of, of tears uh, the number of uh, uh, variations is is something which is a challenge which we which we spend a lot of time on grading. Uh, Dhruva was involved deeply on the grading with it. So was Aribanji was shown regularly, and we tried to get back uh, the colors of what uh, we think Aribanji had, and, and he was quite satisfied with the whole uh, the color grading of the film. Uh, so this is important. I mean, the challenges are always there right from when you begin the film repair uh, almost to the original negative. And uh, you, you, you many times have to do frame by frame to join them, to join the splices, and then the scanning uh, to, to achieve a certain quality of scanning, and then the stabilization and the digital restoration and finally grading sound and you know in Arivam Ji's film which is uh, which is his hallmark the quality of sound is so important uh, which I find that people don't really uh, pay that much of attention to digital restoration on sound and uh, filmmakers like Arivam Ji um, there are little little sounds 
uh, which it's almost, you know, I want to give an example. Um, there was a painting which was being cleaned up. And we never saw that in the painting, that at the bottom of the painting, there was a little childlike figure. But once it was cleaned, suddenly that image appeared. So sound is also like that. That, you know, there are little, little sounds of insects or shot outdoor or the things. It sort of got submerged with over the time and, and with the other noise levels. Because when you project a print, uh, there are those crackling sounds and the other sounds. So sound restoration is equally challenging and important because, because especially when you don't have unmixes, you know. Uh, you're working with a, with a mixed track, sound mixes are lost or the sound negative is lost. So those are the challenges we had uh, while working. Then it almost took a year uh, to to restore the film to its glory. And and uh, it it looks challenging one year, but by the time you start working, and we worked through COVID, we worked through the most tough period of time, and uh, it was. Uh, uh, I I want to give a lot of credit to Dhruva uh, for being uh, absolutely. Uh, on every minute, every call of ours, every minute of ours, to be so involved with his grandfather's work. Um, that 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 itself was heartening to me because you have a generation which is very different than ours. And, and he's from the new generation. And uh, he was committed and he, his knowledge and his, his, his whole understanding of that medium and understanding of cell law. And that helps. Because, because when you have somebody so positive, uh, then working with it, and, and we believe in that, okay, to, to work with the people involved in the film. You see, I, I, I strongly feel many times, and I want to say, when the government works on films, they don't involve anybody. They think they know everything and they restore it, like a, or like a tender system. Or to, this is not your film. This is Aribam Sham Sharma's film. I am just helping it to bring back to his vision. I cannot add even one color or one thing which I want to add. It is not my painting. And that's the lesson I learned from Pekin Iyer. I learned that you can only help it to come to that stage. The, the, it has to be his vision, with which he's done again, back again. So... So that was an important lesson which I've learned through Bologna, through Pekinire, through everything, to respect the original artist's work and, and not to tamper with it. So you've got, to, you've got to be on a thin line all the time, thinking that, am I interfering anywhere too much? Is, is Arivamji going to be okay with this? Or is, you know, are they going to be okay with that? And, and you've got to respect that. Thank you, Shivendra. I think that's a really important thing to um, to know. Uh, you know um, that that the work, you know, even though it has it has been done so long ago, you know, we we ought to respect it in within uh, within the 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 limits of of, of artistic creation uh, and and those who have, who have made it. Um, I think we've we've uh, you know we've come to quite quite a we've talked quite a bit. Uh, I still have so many more questions, but I I you know I think I don't want to overrun. Um, but perhaps I'll just uh, ask the last question to Arvindji. Um I'm wondering if you could talk a bit about where you see Manipuri cinema uh, at at present, at where it is now. Where where do you think it's going to to progress to? Uh, and of course yourself, um, what do you look forward to uh, in terms of your own work? Uh, is there anything that you are uh, working on right now or, or, or interested to work on? If you could talk a bit about that, I think that would be really nice. Uh, at present, the situation in Manipur uh, is very discouraging to filmmaking for uh, and our life itself is becoming very difficult in Manipur due to conflict of ethnic conflict. And uh, there was actually, uh, that happens from me and uh, my screening at, well, the film screening at Khan, you know, I was, uh, I couldn't complete my journey. It was so uh, 
you know, in Manipur, we never expected this thing will happen and the killings and burning houses and everything. I think you have heard about that. And so right now, it is not conducive. But, but I say, this is in our blood culture and uh, it will definitely um, improve and uh, we are very much positive to that. And now I am nearly 90 years old, 88. And even then, I'm trying, if possible, to make another film, if possible, if, 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 uh, if the uh, condition of Manipur, Manipur improves. If not, we are not in a very happy uh, position right now. Uh, I, uh, I hope the uh, the conflict and the tensions, uh, you know, come to some sort of resolution at some point. Uh, and uh, wishing you all the best, Aribamji, uh, being there and and to all the man the people in Manipur at this at this point. Um, and uh, I think I would like to, uh, yeah, thank you both. Thank you, Aribamji. Thank you, Sirendra, for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, I think we are all very excited to be um, presenting this restored version of Isanu here in Singapore and to introduce it to a whole new uh, audience. Um, and we'll be sure to let you know what the responses were. I'm sure they'd be great. So um, thank you and, and um, have a great day. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shivendra, also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Yeah, please.